At 39 years of age, most people have established themselves in their careers. But at 39, George Chevallo, our great Canadian hope in boxing, has gone back to the ring. Gone back to regain a title that he never lost in a fight, but lost because there were no fights. The Canadian Boxing Federation said that he was inactive. Chevallo said no one ever challenged him. Chevallo is running and punching and puffing and getting ready to stick out that scarred and puffy face that has been punched by the most celebrated fists in boxing, sticking it out to be punched once again. The man he'll fight is Robert Pretty Boy Feldstein. At 33 years of age, he is no young hotshot contender. But nevertheless, for $5,000, he'll try to do what no man in 97 professional fights has been able to do. He will try to knock out George Chevallo. Nobody's ever knocked Chevallo down, but if there's a possibility, I'll try. I'll be throwing the hardest punch I've ever thrown in my life in this fight. Uh, I said many years ago, you just put your right hand in your pocket and just use your left jab with George because he's a sucker for a left jab. But you're talking about a boxing. You, you can't uh, fight with George. You'll have to box him to beat him. Chevallo's motives in going for this fight are not clear. His lifelong manager, Irving Ungerman, would have nothing to do with this fight. Ungerman says that Chevallo's too old to fight. Chevallo points out, bitterly, that Ungerman would certainly have stuck around for a bout with a big-name contender, like in the old days. I'm going back into the ring at age of 39 because uh, I have a vendetta against the Canadian Boxing Federation. I feel I've been abused by the Canadian Boxing Federation because they've never really stood up on my behalf internationally, especially with the British Boxing Board. I'm only one of many Canadians who have held the Canadian title who have never had a crack at the British Empire title, especially since, uh, well, in the last 40 years, since the 30s, since Larry Gaines, who was the last Canadian to ever hold the British Empire title. None of us have ever had a crack at it since then. Earl Walls, James G. Parker, Bob Clarou, myself, none of us have ever had a crack. And especially since all of us were ranked ahead of the British Empire champions in the world, rank, uh, world ratings. The Canadian Boxing Federation has never made a stand on our behalf. Now, internationally, they're, they're pussycats, but domestically, they try to be tough guys. They have a meeting once a year, and they said, well, George Chevallo has to defend the title for about a year or so. Uh, forgetting the fact that nobody has ever challenged me. Nobody has wanted to fight me. Nobody has ever expressed a desire to get in the ring with me. And they took the title away, and this is uh, something that's really irked me. And uh, actually, I have to take that back. There were, uh, Bobby Felsen did say he wanted to fight me about uh, six months prior to them taking the title away. Nick Zubre wanted to put on the fight in Edmonton which is the home of the Canadian Boxing Federation's president, Ron Hader, which just shows how stupid it is. The fight was scheduled uh, for about six months prior to them lifting my title from me, and uh, it's just, it just absurd when you think about it. I was pretty by Feldstein as an opponent. When I think of Bobby Feldstein, he's the epitome of a guy wanting to survive. That's all he can think of in terms of, uh, uh, of this fight, is trying to go 12 rounds and perhaps steal a decision some which way. But his only uh, uh, hope is to get out of there quick and get, it, get knocked out very cleanly and get out. Because, uh, otherwise, if he sticks off a while, he's going to get hurt badly, I feel. I'm just going to annihilate him. He's the kind of guy I love to fight. He's the right height. He's a tall guy. He's taller than I am. He's, he's a fairly heavy fellow, but he doesn't move that well. He's the kind of fellow I can maneuver. I can keep him on the ropes. I can keep him away from the center of the ring. And I can really make it my kind of fight. I can control Bobby Felsner. So anytime you can control a man, make a fight your kind of fight, it's an easy fight. At 18, George was a professional boxer, knocking out four men one night. By 21, he was Canadian heavyweight champion. Always a top-ranked boxer, he was even ranked as number one contender for the world title at one time. During Chevallo's undisputed reign as Canadian champion, he was always in the big time, but never in the money. Chevallo has fought all the great champions, Floyd Patterson, George Foreman, Muhammad Ali, but he's never won the world heavyweight crown. His endurance is legendary. He has dignified the act of taking endless physical punishment. Muhammad Ali said, I don't know who was ever tougher on me physically than Granite Jaw George Chevallo. He gave me two distance fights for a total of 27 rounds, took everything I had to dish out and kept coming back for more. In fact, 
It's said that Ali seriously damaged his hands from punching Chevallo's face. Today, when he slugs the 200-pound bag, you can still see the force and stamina that gave him his reputation. When you watch him skip rope, you see the lightness of a dancer, not the plodding of a punched out bum. <clears throat> Nevertheless, at 39, a five mile run can be a lonely experience. The sweetness of past victories does not numb the pain of trying to forge a 270 pound body to a fighting weight 230 pounds. I'm starting to enjoy my training uh, at this stage because uh, it's the last week. But I must uh, comment that the earlier part of the training was pure torture for me. It was really sheer torture. And it was a lot of work, especially since I had about 35 or 40 pounds to lose. And I lost the bulk of that. And uh, it's really been an arduous grind. But the last week I'm starting to enjoy because I know it's the last week. And I'm really, uh, I really starting to feel sharp, especially today I felt very sharp. I started to feel very strong. I'm really starting to concentrate on the fight. and I'm, I really know what I have to do in the fight in order to win the fight, handily. And uh, this is what I really have to do the last week. I'm starting to enjoy it because I know this is a, this is coming down to D-Day. So it's, uh, it's this is my cup of tea the last week. Basically, training in terms of hitting the bag, skipping rope, rope, all point to one thing, conditioning, stamina, endurance. And uh, this is what I need to primarily in this fight. As long as I have my stamina together, as long as I'm able to go at a good, fast, hard pace, this fight will be no problem for me at all. Chevalo is a highly complex man. He's chronically late. People say of him that he is sensitive, stubborn, sentimental, and strong. He's gentle, clever, and soft-spoken. George Chevallo knows that inside the ring, wearing only his trunks and bathed in light, he is a sex symbol a 20th century gladiator, despite the fact that he's a little overweight. Clearly, he is an individual who cannot bear the manipulation of his destiny, particularly by people like Ron Hayter of the Canadian Boxing Federation, who wiped out his title with the bureaucratic strike of his pen. Many things have eluded George Chevallo the world heavyweight title, the British Empire crown, but never pride. And so, for $10,000, Chevalla will again step into the ring to fight for pride and not for money. And like Rocky from the motion picture, George Chevallo doesn't want to be the world heavyweight champ necessarily, he just wants to be a contender. In George's terms, that means Canadian champ. But for George Chevallo, this is his last stand.